I'm going to show you how to use the payment function in Excel 2003 and 2010. Whatever I show you in 2010 is pretty much the same as in 2007. So what I've got here, and this is what the payment function does, it's PMT for short when you're looking for the function, is you have an amount borrowed, you've got an interest rate, and I've got a term here of 25 years. And this is going to tell me how much money you have to pay back every month which is what that monthly payments is there. One of the objectives of showing you this function as well is some features of functions that you will then be able to apply to other functions as well. Okay, so this is 2003 at the moment. So I've clicked in the cell where I want the answer. Here is my insert function button. I could go into insert and choose function as well. I like doing it from here. So I'm gonna click here and it is, if I click on this drop down box, it is a financial function. And if I scroll down my list, I said it's called PMT. And there it is. And it says it calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and constant interest rate. If I couldn't remember what it was called, I could type payments in here. Click on go and you'll see it comes up with some options. And that is one of them there. Once I click on OK, you'll see that I just need to fill everything in. I'm going to switch now to 2010 because it works the same here except I'm going to click there where I want my monthly payment to go. I'm going to click on formulas. I'm going to click on this drop down list. I'm going to scroll down to find my PMT function which is just there. You will notice I've got insert function which does exactly the same as it does in 2003 and I could do a search as well. But since we've done that I'm going to click on PMT here and here are my function arguments. And if I just flick back to 2003, you'll see it's exactly the same dialog box as here. So I'm going to complete it in 2010. There is absolutely no difference. So the rate is the interest rate. And you can see down here it tells you that is the interest rate per period for the loan. I'm going to click on that, that 4%. It pops it in there now. This is annual interest and you're paying monthly, so you need to divide by 12. NPR is the number of payment periods. I've got 25 years here. However, I'm paying that over each month, so I'm just going to multiply that by 12. So it's 300 months in total, and you see it does the calculation for you right there. The present value is how much you borrowed which is that. And immediately you can see that those three have been filled in. They're in bold here. Anything in bold has to be filled in. The rest is optional. So by doing that you can see the payments are 527 and point in some decimal places. And it's negative because it's an outgoing. If you didn't want to see it as a negative what you could do is put a minus sign in front there and you can see it's removed it. I'm going to keep the minus sign in so I'm just going to take that out. So what is FV? FV is the future value. So if you're paying everything back, that value is going to be zero. So if you leave it out, if you omit it, it will assume it to be zero anyway, which is what it says here. So I'm going to leave that out. The type, if I click there, is whether you pay at the beginning or the end of the payment period. Zero is at the end, or if you leave it blank, which is what I've done at the moment, or one is if you paid at the beginning. Now most things that you have to pay on some sort of loan you pay at the beginning and you'll see why that can be advantageous. You'll see here it says 527.83 and some more decimal places. If I put in a 1 you'll see it's reduced it by a bit and over a period of time that can be a significant amount. So you'll see if I change that to a 0 or if I take it out it has it at that. I'm going to put it back in as a 1 so it's paid at the beginning. So I can click on OK. And there you can see it's done it there. So that is how to use the payment function. What I can do now if I want to is see what the total payments are. So just a little calculation here. Total paid. It's going to be equal to this amount here. Multiplied by the 25 which is in B3. Multiplied by per month. 12. And you can see that that is the total amount paid back. So that is how to use the payment function in Excel 2003, 2010, and it also works the same in 2007.